In this video we're going to look at how to interrogate a database. Now in the previous video we met the idea of a large database and selecting a small sample um, from that large database and we had Ellen wishing to take a sample of 10 laptops from a database which gave information about 100 laptops but Ellen wanted to obtain a sample of 10 laptops each with 8 gigabytes of RAM and she's going to use this sample to investigate the prices and sizes and so on of such laptops and we saw in the previous video that this could be done by process of sorting the data and then taking a random sample from what was left and by the time we'd done that we ended up with a sample of 10 computers from the database which are given on the Excel sheet here and what we're now going to do is we're going to look at the analysis of this sample Now at the moment the sample is sitting in Excel and we could do the analysis on Excel. We could export the information to a statistical data handling package or we can use GeoGebra and we'll use GeoGebra simply because it is readily available and it's quite nice and easy to produce summary statistics and diagrams which will then enable us to make deductions and inferences about the population of the laptops equipped with 8 gigabytes of RAM. In all of the screens that follow, I'm using GeoGebra Classic 5. If you've got a different version of GeoGebra, it will work in a slightly different way. So our first job is to transfer the data from Excel across to GeoGebra and to do that we need to highlight the data in Excel including the column headings press Control C which will then copy that data and then open our GeoGebra workbook up and from the little drop down menu on the right hand side where there's an arrow or we can use the view options we need to view the spreadsheet go to the top cell in the spreadsheet top left hand corner and now press control V which will paste the data make the spreadsheet slightly bigger so you can see all the data and then highlight the prices and go to the one variable analysis tool and select analyze and you'll start getting a histogram on the right hand side we don't need the graphics page so we'll shut that down and enlarge the data analysis window at the moment we've got a rather unsatisfactory histogram so we're going to select that little arrow there and set, set the classes manually with a start value of 600 and to go up in bars of width 200 which will produce a much better looking histogram now we'll talk about this histogram a little bit further when we get a little bit um, onto the next slide but let's consider carry on with the analysis if we press that Sigma X button we'll get all the statistics and the statistics are worked out from the raw data that we've got here looking at the histogram that we've got here or supposed histogram that we've got here it really is actually a frequency bar chart because the height of the first bar is 2 and there are actually two of these laptops that had a price between 600 and 800 pounds the height of the second bar is three, and there were three bar. There were three computers with price between 800 and 1,000, and so on. So the first comment I want to make is that the histogram really is a frequency bar chart, since the y-axis is giving us the frequency 
for each group. GeoGebra will only work with equal size groups, so we can't create histograms with different size groups. Looking now at the statistics that we've got, the mean gives us the mean price of the laptops in the sample. And that would be, if the sample is a random sample from a population, then the sample mean gives us an unbiased estimate of the population mean. So if the sample is a genuine sample, a, ra a genuine random sample from the population of all laptops, then with a um, RAM size of 8 gigabytes, then what we've got here is an unbiased estimate of the mean price of all laptops with a, an 8 gigabyte RAM. Sigma gives us the standard deviation of the prices of laptops in the sample and immediately underneath it S gives us the value or an estimate of the standard deviation of prices of laptops with 8 gigabytes RAM based on this random sample. Now we can get other graphs for the um, data and we'll see that now. So if I click down there I can select in particular a box plot for the data and if you look on the right hand side of the resulting bo box plot you can see that I've got the outliers checked so if there were any outliers for this data they would be marked with a small cross beyond the two fences but in this case there are no outliers it will do what it produces what it calls a bar chart which isn't much use at all Going back then, now before I do anything else, I need to unclick the set classes manually. Because if I don't do that, I'm going to get a mess when I go to the next stage. So unclick that. I'm now going to highlight the weights of the laptops. Go to the one variable analysis. Confirm that that G3 to G12 is where the data is. I've now got an initial histogram and a revised set of statistics for the weights of the laptops. Moving to the box plot, we can now see that there is an outlier on the distribution because there's a cross there. Now at this stage, just pause the video for a moment or two and write down a paragraph just describing the distribution of the weights of the 8 gigabyte laptops that we've got in this sample. Now we can use also use GeoGebra to look at bivari uh, bivariate statistics so we might use it to investigate how the price and the weights are connected. So if we highlight both the weights and the heights and select now, instead of the one variable statistics, go to two variable regression analysis for the highlighted data. Press analyze. Then we get a scatter diagram for the data. The value of R gives us the correlation coefficient, which confirms the fact that we really have not very good correlation there at all. It's vaguely positive. We can add a regression line to the data as well. It's not a very good line in this case of best fit, but it's the best we can do. And if we want to make a prediction, which wouldn't be very sensible in this particular case, of what the price would be for a laptop of weight 1.65 kilograms, then we're getting coming out with an answer from the 
best fit line of £1166. But as we said, this would not be very reliable simply because the correlation coefficient isn't very good. We've not got a good best fit line for this data. So we've now seen how we can use GeoGebra to quickly illustrate data and to get the summary statistics for data both if the data is one variable data or if it's bivariate data. And that will conclude then our look at interrogating a database.